Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We thank the Lord for those selections that have went up on this morning. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. At this time, I will return the remaining of the service into the hands of Elder Damon Blissett. Let's greet him with a hearty praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We thank God for the service thus far and the selections that have, uh, some selections that have gone before him. Amen. Amen. We pray that he uh, has been glorified on today and we just magnify the name of the Amen. Lord. For he has just been so good unto us. We thank God for just another opportunity to come together um, in a church service um, that we may praise and magnify his name, come together Amen. in fellowship and Touch and agree on his word. Amen. As brothers and sisters, we just thank God for our fellowship on today. Amen. Amen. At this time, this day and age that we're in, uh, the order of the day is to stay away. Amen. But we thank God for the, those opportunities to uh, come together to fellowship um, with one another. Amen. We're in a, in a time of transition in our society and as the world is gonna, as uh, since we're uh, are the church, we know that the world is gonna come to an end and we're gonna have to, have to do things slightly different here. And we know that the Lord is coming and there's a shifting that's going on in the atmosphere. Yes. And we just love the Lord for all that he's done for us. And we have um, a word on today, amen. We just thank God for what he's done for us and what he's going to do, amen. As I get things pulled up here. Amen. A simple word of God that we have. We thank God for another opportunity to bring forth his word. Amen. I just love the Lord today for he has just been so good unto me. Amen. 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 As they used to say in the latter, um, in the olden days, somehow I cannot tell it all. Um, I believe that was a song. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. He's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. Amen. I just love the Lord on today. Amen. For all that he's done for me in my lifetime. Amen. And I just love him. I'm going to ask that uh, God just continue to be with me. Amen. As these life um, trials and tribulations will come. Amen. That we, uh, we, that we all, but I'm talking about myself, just continue to hold on to the faith. Amen. And stand on God's word. Amen. I just love the Lord on today. Amen. On today's word, uh, Message is actually is uh, something I mentioned a few weeks ago, amen, uh, in one of the scriptures I pulled from um, one verse out of this particular chapter, and I said um, that the beginning of this book, this particular chapter, rather, uh, says a whole lot, and I thought I would pull that out, and also within uh, some of the sub-themes in some of my, some of the recent messages that I've been preaching and speaking on, uh, were mentioning about... Uh, some uh, about gods and idols, other gods and uh, idols things. And there's some things that I, in my meditation that I intended to bring out, but I failed to do due to how um, the message was being brought forth at that particular time. I'm going to talk about that, um, those little things, and then talk about this particular scripture. And then we'll try and conclude this in, in our service on today. But we just thank God for the word. Let us pray. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for just this opportunity once again. Lord, to partake in your word, O oh God, we thank you for this gathering, for you being here in our presence, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for all that you've done for us, O oh God. Watch over us, O oh God. O oh God, feed us through your word, O oh God. Encourage us and us to grow in faith continually, O oh God, that we may grow in you, O oh God, that we may be that witness, that lighthouse, and to others that do not know you, O oh God, in these last single days. Be with us, O oh God. We love you, we praise you, we magnify you, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 We're going to go to the book of Joshua, and we're going to go to the last chapter, chapter 24. And this will be the only verses of Scripture that we read. It'll be, through. It'll be most of Joshua, chapter 24. We'll be reading verses 1 through 13, and then we'll uh, talk about a few things and come back to this and and make some references here. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Joshua chapter 24. Amen. Joshua 24. We're going to read verses 1 through 13. For those that are taking notes, um, this will be the only set of scriptures for today. I'll read it and then I'll give our thought. Then we'll talk for a few minutes and then we'll conclude on today. And, and I'll read from my actual hard Bible and then I'll make my references to this in my notes here. Joshua chapter 24, verses 1, and it reads, excuse me, and Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and called for the elders of Israel and for their hand and for their judges, excuse me, and for their heads and for their judges and for their officers, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old time, even Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nachar, and they served other gods. <coughs> Excuse me. And I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood and led him throughout all the land of Canaan and multiplied his seed and gave him Isaac. I'm at verse four. And I gave unto Isaac, Jacob and Esau and gave unto Esau Mount Seir to possess it. But Jacob and his children went down into Egypt. I sent Moses also and Aaron and I played Egypt according to that which I did among them. And afterward, I brought you out. And I brought your fathers out of Egypt, and you came unto the sea, and, e and the Egyptians pursued after your fathers with chariots and horsemen unto the Red Sea. Verse 7, And when they cried, cried unto the Lord, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians, and brought the sea unto them, and covered them, and your eyes have seen what I have done in Egypt." And ye dwelt in the wilderness a long season. Verse 8, And I brought you unto brought you into the land of the Amorites, which dwelt on the other side, Jordan, and they fought with you, and I gave them into your hand that ye might possess their land, and I destroyed them from before you. Then Balak and the son of Zippar, king of Moab, arose and warred against Israel, and sent and called Balaam, the son of Beor, the curse to curse you. Verse 10, but I would not hearken unto Balaam, therefore he blessed you still, so I delivered you out of his hand. And ye went over Jordan and came into Jericho. And the men of Jericho fought against you, the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Girgashites, and the Hevites, and the Jebusites, and I delivered them into your hand. Verse 12, And I sent the hornet before you, which drove them out from before you, even the two kings of the Amorites, but not with thy sword, nor with thy bow. And finally, 13 says, And I have given you a land for which ye did not labor, and cities which ye, did, ye built not, and dwelt in them, and the vineyards and the olive yards which ye planted not do you eat. Amen. May God add a blessing to the reading and hearing and doing of this word. Amen. Amen. If you was following on there and, and listening to what was being stated there, um, my thought for today is do you remember? Do you remember? Amen. The thought for today is do you remember? Amen. And before I really jump into this verses of scripture here, as I was mentioning uh, in previous um, messages I was spoken about, and there's been some sub things where I kept talking about gods and idols, other gods and idols, not the almighty God, but other gods and idols. And if you think about um, in the Old Testament, how the um, children of Israel or the nation of Israel, how they kept serving God but then they would turn to idols and other gods, the other gods of the land, and they kept turning back and they kept going back and forth like a pendulum. They kept going back and forth between saying that they're going to serve God, but then they would fail to do that and go to other gods and, um, 
than idols and things. Amen. And when I was, as I was mentioning, there's a, a, a thought that in my meditation, I was studying those lessons that I wanted to bring out, but I failed to do that. And what I want to mention, um, and scripturally, we was talking about, of course, other gods and idols. But if we look at um, modern day time, um, what would we consider those other gods or idols? Amen. For ourselves. Amen. If you think about it, if you look at people in this in our day and age, what do we what do we consider what do you consider to be other gods or idols? And those things would be like um, our jobs. Mm -hmm. Our jobs can be uh, uh, another god, or our money could be another type of god, or our degrees could be another type of god. Um, some people, their families are another type of god, or some can be their spouse or their children. They can put them up on a pedestal, uh, um, and that can be a, another job. Some is their reputation, their prestige, amen, it can be other gods. Some of some people, it can be power, power, amen, always trying to uh, climb the ladder, if you will, always going after other positions and higher positions just for the sake of power, uh, so they can say they have power, trying to put power on their name, and these things become gods. Um Another way to look at it from a definition standpoint is um, what is another God or an idol? It's anything that can take more attention or take take your time away from serving God. Amen. Doing the things that we should do as godly people. Amen. Anything that can distract you uh, permanently, um, consist, consistently take your time away from God. Amen. If you think about it, um, for those of us that went to school, meaning college, amen, we, uh, we had those days and days where we prayed and we uh, fasted and we talked to God because we were struggling to get through our classwork, and our classwork day in and day out, semester in, semester out, and finally God will um, just bless your labor and your faithfulness to him and allow you to pass those hard classes, even though some of those grades may not be an A's or B's, but you pass the class to continue to progress Toward that degree, and it may take years and months and semester after semester, but you finally got that degree. Amen. And for some of us, we have struggled trying to find that career job. We we're just going from job to job and um, was frustrated. And we prayed for God to give you that dream job, that career job, that job that can give you the finances that you need and the satisfaction in your working. Um, and we prayed and we prayed and we struggled in our life and our finances. And then finally, God will. Uh, rewarded you and gave you that job that you needed. Amen. And then, of course, we, some of us um, have struggled with fi family um, and different issues, and we prayed and we prayed, and then we, uh, then God will finally bless you and your family, whether it's your spouse or your children and this and any other. Or some of us had, those, had dreams of climbing up the corporate ladder, and finally um, um, we prayed and we um, just had those dreams and desires, and God would reward you to become those supervisors and managers and vice presidents and on up or even to uh, own your own business and this and that and the other. Amen. May God bless you because you were faithful unto him. But then there came a time once God rewarded you, once we got what we wanted, then our time, our, then our faces turned away from him. Amen. That, that time that we were faithful in our daily prayer life began to uh, dwindle to not every day, but a few days a week. And then maybe a day a week, and then to not whatsoever. Amen. Amen. We just continue to uh, put our time and focus on the things that God had blessed us with. Amen. That that career job, we um, we f uh, fought and we prayed and we worked hard, but now we're putting all our time and attention into that. Amen. We climbed the corporate ladder, so now we're trying to maintain and keep that, that power and that position and all the finances that come along with it, but now we do not have time for God. Amen. Amen. When we struggled, amen, we were driving those uh, little hoopty cars and things that just, we was hoping that every time we put the key in that it would start. Amen. Hopefully we had enough gas to get where we needed to go, uh, to go to our jobs and this and that and the other. Now that God has blessed you with the Mercedes Benz, now we don't have time for him. Amen. Amen. Now that we have the house on the hill, amen, all we do is talk about our house at home. Amen. We're not giving God praise for that dwelling place, but we're um, bragging on our possessions. Amen. Not giving God the, the time and the opportunity. 
amen, to just continue to bless you, amen, as he did before. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And, and, and when I read through the scripture, as I was studying for another message where I, I believe that scripture, verse of scripture that I used was um, verse 19 of this, of this particular chapter. Amen. It read, and Joshua said unto the people, you cannot serve the Lord for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sin. And in that particular lesson, I was referencing that God is jealous. Amen. We serve a jealous God and he wants his attention. Amen. We need to give God our attention. Amen. Not about these, um, these possessions. Amen. These positions that we have. We um, need to give God his time. Amen. And then I begin to read this. And this particular chapter is the last chapter of Joshua. And this is um, prior to him um, um, dying after he had already um, taken the place of leadership for the um, nation of Israel uh, before they crossed over Jordan when Moses died. Amen. Now it's time for um, Joshua to go off the scene. And before he did, he was given an address to the nation. And he, um, starting at verse, reading from the beginning here, he said, And Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and called for the elders of, the, of Israel and for their heads and for their judges and for their officers, and they presented themselves before God. And this then said, Joshua said unto all the people, Thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Lord, amen. When um, God is talking here, God is talking here through Joshua. It says, Thus saith the Lord of Israel, your father dwelt, dwelt on the other side of the flood in the time of Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nachar, and they served other gods. Amen. So he's reminding them of where they came from. They came, um, they were a people that served other gods. Amen. We know that Abraham is the father of the uh, of the nation of Israel. Amen. Where the, the initial promise of this nation was given unto Abraham, amen. But at that time, they were people that served other gods. They did not serve the almighty God, amen. And verse three says, I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood and led him throughout all the land of Canaan and multiplied his seed and gave him Isaac. And I said unto Isaac, and I gave unto Isaac Jacob and Esau, and I gave unto Esau my seer to possess it, but Jacob and his children went down into Egypt. And it reads further. I sent Moses also and Aaron, and I plagued Egypt according to that which I did among them. And afterward, I brought you out. Now look at that. It says, I sent Moses and also Aaron, and I plagued Egypt. So they were in a dive. They were enslavement at this time. And, and God... And I believe in the scripture it says that um, they were enslavement for over for around 425 years there about depending your on what commentary you read it was over 400 years that they were enslaved and if we uh, read the scriptures we know that they were at this time were serving the Almighty God and they were praying and crying out unto God during their time of enslavement and now it's time that Moses came on the scene where God chose him to be the one to bring them out. And uh, during that time, when Moses was doing that, he said, and they play, he, God plagued Egypt. And then he said, according to that which I did among them, and afterward, I brought you out. Amen. And we're looking forward to that. God bringing us out. Amen. Bringing us out. Amen. Up enslavement. Enslavement. Amen. So this is one thing we ought to remember that we got our, while you're enslavement, and God sent the plagues, and now he brought you out. Amen. That is one point here. So do you remember during the time that you were in enslavement in Egypt, but now God has brought you out? Verse 6 here, continuing on, it says, I brought your fathers out of Egypt, and you came unto the sea, and the Egyptians pursued after your fathers with chariots and horsemen unto the Red Sea. So even after they brought, was brought out, Pharaoh still was chasing after them, still was chasing after them. And when they cried unto the Lord, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians and brought the sea unto them and covered them. And your eyes have seen what I have done in Egypt. 
So even after they had came after them, amen, they cried out to, unto God again. Amen. And then God blessed them by, it says they covered them in the Red Sea. Covered them. So I what? So your eyes have seen what I have done in Egypt, and ye dwelt in the wilderness a long season. So now we're at verse 8. Amen. So it says, he had put darkness between you and the Egyptians and brought the sea unto them and covered them, and your eyes have seen what I have done in Egypt. So here we have two occasions where God had blessed them when they were in torment. Amen. Amen. But God had brought them out on two occasions at this time. Joshua is bringing this stuff to their remembrance, bringing these things to their remembrance. At verse 8, it says, I brought you into the land of the Amorites who dwelt on the other side, Jordan. And they fought with you. I gave them into your hands that ye might possess their land, and I destroyed them before you. Amen. So here again, it says, I brought you into this land of the Amorites on the other side of the Jordan, and they fought with you. Amen. So now we're here. We are in another fight. As we can, as life continues on, there's going to be one fight after another, one fight after another. There's going to be one issue. Seems like every time you get the victory, here comes another issue. Here comes another problem, another situation. Amen. Every time you get this one bill paid off, here comes another bill. Every time you seem like you get healed from one illness, here comes another sickness. Amen. It's always one fight after another, but we must continue to have faith in God. Because as it says, he says, and I gave them unto your hand that ye might possess their land and destroy them from before you. Amen. Amen. Let me continue on here reading here. In verse 9, it says, then Balak, the son of Zippar, king of Moab, arose and warred against Israel. So here we are in another fight. Here we are in another fight. And he said, and sent and called Balaam, the son of Baal, to curse you. So um, you're in another war, and they are planning to curse you. But here in verse 10, it says, but I would not hearken unto Balaam. Therefore, he blessed you still. So God is still in the blessing business. Amen. As these things keep coming, be faithful unto God, and he will continue to bless you. And it says, so I delivered you out of his hands. Amen. So um, we have victory in this war. So here we are. What I'm looking at, I'm counting, this is the fourth blessing. Joshua is reminding them how God is continuing and continue to bring them out. Amen. And where are we at? Verse 10? Yes. Amen. Delivered you out of his hands. Let's look at verse 11. And ye went over Jordan and came into Jericho, and the men of Jericho fought against you, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Girgashites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, amen. They brought all the ranks on this one. Amen. What is that? How many is that? Amorites, one. Perizzites, two. Canaanites, three. Hittites, four. Girgashites, five. Hivites, six. And Jebusites, seven. Amen, seven. But what does it say after that? And? I delivered them into your hand. Amen. When all of them came, all seven of them came after them and said, I delivered them into your hands. So here we are again, continue to have blessing after blessing after blessing in the time when we are in turmoil. Amen. When we are warring against something. Amen. There's always something in our life. Amen. That is going to come out there. Our finances are always failing us. We always seem like we're short of money. Amen. Our desires and dreams seems like we're not meeting them. Amen. Amen. Our health will seem like it's always failing us. We're always sick. Amen. We're wondering when we're going to get our healing, our deliverance. Amen. But if we hold steady and hold to our faith in God, he will soon deliver you out. Amen. So Joshua here is trying to remind them as he's going off the scene, um, telling him to basically, as I'm saying here, do you remember when God blessed you? Do you remember where you were? And here you are now that God has blessed you. Remember these things that we must serve the almighty God. Amen. We had went through verses 13, but I want to continue here. A few more verses here. Read this, and then we'll conclude this. At verse 14, it says, Now therefore fear the Lord, and serve him sincerity, in sincerity and in truth, 
and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and served the Lord. So Joshua is warning them to not to fall into those other gods, amen, not to put um, serve these other gods, but to continue to serve the almighty God. Serve the ye the Lord. And it seemed evil unto you to serve the Lord. Choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. We must make a decision who are we going to serve? Amen. That was on our family prayer. That is, this spirit scripture is something I always read in terms of me and my house. Amen. We, got, we have to serve the Lord. We have to make our minds on a daily basis that we are going to serve the almighty God. Amen. Because we want God's favor in our life. Amen. Amen. Things may come our way. Amen. That we do not like. Amen. Our finances may be short. We may have desires to buy this and have this possession, that possession, but our finances that may not be there, but we hold on to God's, as they just say, hold on to God's unchanging hand, amen. We know that God will bless us in that situation in due time. Amen, and I believe I'm at verse 16, it says, and the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. 17 says, for the Lord our God, he is <clears throat> he it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage in which those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the ways wherein we went uh, and among all the people through whom we passed. Mm -hmm. And the Lord drove out from before us all the people, even the Amorites, which dwelt in the land. Therefore, Will we also serve the Lord for he is our God? Amen. Joshua was doing this to bring these things to remembrance. Amen. And now that he has stated them, <clears throat> now the people are um, recalling that, yeah, I do remember this. I do remember that we were in bondage and, and brought out of Egypt and the plagues came. Amen. And then the sea caved and uh, caved in on the soldiers as they were chasing us into um as we were crossing over the Red Sea. And then when we came into the Canaan land that God had promised us that the Amorites and others, they came and, and we're not going to serve their God or the gods of the Egypt of our fathers, that we are going to serve you. Amen. But 19, it says, And Joshua said unto them, uh, said unto the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God, for he is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. And verse 20 says, If ye forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you after that he have done you good. Amen. So after God has done us good, we must hold on. We can't continue to fall back. Amen. We do not want the wrath of God on us after he had done delivered us. Amen. Just think about it on, uh, from, our, from our own standpoint. When we, uh, whether it's our children or our friends or something, when we bless somebody and then all of a sudden they turn their back on you. Amen. Think about that. How do we feel? How do we feel? Amen. Right. Amen. Someone is struggling and you give them your mortgage money so they can pay their rent. And then all of a sudden they're talking about you or doing backstabbing you. Amen. How do you feel? Amen. Just think about that. So God, he is a jealous God. Amen. He wants our attention. Amen. Where did I leave off at? Verse 20. It says, if ye forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you. After that, he have done you good. And the people said unto Joshua, nay, but we will serve the Lord. Amen. So they're making a commitment here. Amen. And Joshua said unto the people, ye are witnesses against yourselves that ye have chosen you, the Lord, to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses. And now, therefore, put away, said he, the strange gods which are among you, and incline your hearts unto the Lord God of Israel. So Joshua knew something that was going on. Amen. They're claiming that they're going to serve the Lord and making a declaration. But he said, um, there's still these strange gods that are still among you. Amen. Amen. So he's calling them out. Amen. Don't, don't be a false witness here. Amen. Don't say you're going to be a witness unto the Lord. 
Amen. But you're still serving these strange gods. Amen. Amen. If we're going to repent, let's repent fully. Amen. That, um, that is something else about just seeing people who come and make these confessions and then go out and doing the same thing. Amen. We want to have a contrite heart and really turn to God and serve him. Amen. And the people said unto Joshua, the Lord, our God, will we serve in his voice? Will we obey? In 25 here, finally, it says, So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and sent them a statute and ordinance in Shechem. Amen. Amen. Do you remember? Do you remember? Amen. Joshua is here is bringing these things back to their remembrance of, of what God has done for them. And it's warning them that they need to turn away from these strange gods that they are, um, are starting to serve in, these, in this land. Now that God has blessed them to make it over into the Canaan land and conquer Jericho and all these other lands and the people that come to war against them and God has blessed them, but they're uh, serving these strange gods. Amen. And God, Joshua is bringing these to, to their remembrance that God has blessed you when you were struggling, when you were enslavement, but we must remember the Lord our God and be faithful unto him forevermore. Amen. Like unto today, man, we may be have been our, in our struggles with our finances, with our jobs, in school, and in life in general, with our health. Amen. And we prayed and fasted and uh, served the Lord. <clears throat> and as soon as God blesses, then what do we do? We turn back to our old ways. Amen. We must remember what we did when we we're in the, in the struggle, as they say. We gotta, what we did in the struggle, we must do also while we're outside of the struggle. Amen. Now that we have victory, we must stand even forevermore on the promises and the victory that God has given us. Amen. We must stand tall, not, not go running back to the things that got us in trouble. Amen. If you pay all your credit cards off, why are you going to go on a spending spree? Amen. It took all that time, years, to get that cre your credit right and to pay those bills off, and now you're going to go on a shopping spree. Amen. You must sit, maintain to that same discipline, amen, that got you out of it to maintain your credit history. Amen. So but now that we are in victorious in our salvation, amen, Do continue to do those things to maintain our victory in our salvation. Maintain that same discipline, amen, by following the word of God, the scriptures, that praying you did before while you were in the struggle, continue to pray the, the same manner, amen. The, the fasting that you did while you were in the struggle, Continue to do that now that you have the victory, amen. The praise that you have on your lips, amen. While you were in the struggle, continue to praise God on the other side of victory, amen. I thank God for his word. I thank God that I remember my, my struggles, amen, in my lifetime throughout school.